rain. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. I prophesy. I receive. And I decree and I declare. I receive. As I stand in the shoes of the prophet of this house. I receive. Whatsoever you've been praying for, it has been granted to you. I receive. I said you are receiving your promotion tonight. I receive. You are receiving your increase tonight. I receive. You are receiving your miracle jobs tonight. I receive. You are receiving your miracle contracts tonight. I receive. You are receiving financial living. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Listen. encouraging to somebody. Hmm. Hallelujah. Jesus. Let the God of the prophet of this house visit you. Amen. 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 I said amen. amen. I said amen. He ministers to me first. Amen. And I always get excited when I'm in the presence of God because I know He's a God who always does a new thing. I said, I know He's a God who always does a new thing. So where He stopped yesterday, that's where He will start today. And He's a God of new beginnings. His mercies are new every morning. And tonight we are back at the feet of that Jesus. Proper meaning because every of why do we have we have not yet put them into practice. Hence we are mal malfunctioning today. Hallelujah. But now tonight I pray that God will cause us to put his words into remembrance. To put him into remembrance. Oh my God. Hallelujah. We are going to remember him. So if I told there was a scripture in the Bible where he said it is finished. Just know that your case it is finished. So where. Listen to me. So just know that if there is a word that says it is finished. We are here to remember his words. We are here to remember the word. But tonight. There is none like it. To evening. To whatsoever. But our thanks would never be enough. Hallelujah. Say hallelujah. Every time you're about to get to your destination, it's every time the enemy strikes along the way. Every time you're about to receive a multi-billion contract, it's every time something comes up just to block that thing. Every time somebody to poverty, now we taught, it is Monday already, right? Everybody again loves summer to winter. Now what you choose tonight is what will determine what God is going to do in your life. So God says, your season is now. Why? Because he is calling you and I to be still and to know that he is God. In other words, him off. That's putting a demand on himself. 
to say you need to be still. Don't do nothing. Just be what? In other words, don't complain anymore. Don't mama anymore. Don't be frustrated anymore. Don't be stressed up anymore. Just choose to be still. And know that I am God. In other words, the Bible says in Hosea 6 verse 4, it says, my people perish because of what? Lack of knowledge. So it is the power of knowledge. It is knowledge. It is the power of you knowing who your God is in order for you to enjoy the silence or your silence or your stillness in the presence of God. If you don't complain, somebody here talking to somebody is still. They are sitting to question where your God is. The midst of his disciples. Right? And the Bible records to say he was sleeping. He was fast asleep. He was right there in the boat. But he was fast asleep. And the Bible says there was a storm boat. To the point that the boat almost capsized. And the human being. I think it must be. Jesus. I said Jesus. I said Jesus. Shake your neighbor. Say neighbor. Tell them say neighbor. Tell them, say, neighbor, know who you are. Tell them, say, neighbor, know who your God is. Listen, the disciples, they forgot that Jesus was right there with them. Amen. And maybe because they thought he's sleeping, then it means he's sleeping. Listen, the Bible says he never sleeps, nor slumbers. He doesn't do besides his word. You know, he's a man of his words. He's a God of his words. So there are times you'd think as though Jesus doesn't really care about you. You'd think as though God doesn't care about what you're going through. It's as if he doesn't hear. He's a deaf God. He never sleeps, no slumbers. Shake your neighbor, tell them he never sleeps, no slumbers. Oh, tell somebody else, tell them he never sleeps, no slumbers. Listen. He is right there with you. The simple reason is that he has not shown up in the sh on your case is because you have not recognized who he is. You, you have not yet realized who this Jesus is. The day you will know how great he is is the day you will stop suffering. The day you will know him in truth and in spirit. The day you will know him in details is the day when you walk on water and not sink. It's the day when you command things and things will begin to happen. It is the day when you begin to open your eyes spiritually, you begin to see things. My God. I'm about to preach to you in a moment. Now listen. Be 
this till end? That he is? Ask your neighbor, are you still? Or you're still complaining about your school fees? Are you still complaining about what to eat? Are you still complaining about not having a job? Listen. Second thing. You don't need to help God. Just be still and know that he is God. Hey. You don't need so many words. You just need a word from the Lord. You don't need a lot of instructions. You just need one instruction from the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I say thank you, Jesus. I say thank you, Jesus. Ooh. Listen. Many people today we love the anointing, right? Do we love the anointing? Do we need the anointing? Ah, uh -uh. do we need the anointing? Do we love the anointing? Now listen, can I shock you? Or can I just say this? How many people need the anointing? We need the anointing. We need it, right? Do we need the anointing? Yes. Do we need the anointing? Yes. Many people need the anointing, but they don't need, they don't want to pay a price for the anointing. In other words, many people want the glory, but they don't want to pass through what takes people to the glory. For a Joseph to become a prime minister, there must be a prison in between. For an apostle Paul to become an apostle, he must be a persecutor somewhere. For a Hannah to become a mother of a prophet, she has to be a barren woman for some time. In other words, there are certain things that we go through not because they are meant to kill us. They are there to strengthen our character. I said they are there to according to how he they are different he deals with us. Jeremiah 1 verse 5 hey. was known by God before the formation in the mother's womb. And how he knew me is not how he knows you. In other words, there are specific assignments. There are specific callings and gifts that he invests in you that he wishes or he desires or he expects from you. Oh my God. Oh my God. I said, oh my God. Yeah. I said, oh my God. Yeah. I said, oh my God. I want you to know automatically you He said so. What he has, know that he is not the only one here to imagine how much pain Jesus went through. And imagine your pain. Which one is greater? Which one is greater? Is your pain greater than the pain that Jesus went through? Huh? Huh? Now ask your neighbor, say, neighbor, why do you always blame God? Oh, you didn't ask the right neighbor, ask somebody else. Now listen. Jesus cried out to the Father. My Father, my Father, why have you forsaken me? And some of you, you are even crying today as you are praying and fasting. Why have you forsaken me? Huh? Why have you forsaken? Has he forsaken you? No. You just don't know that. He He's right there with you. <laughs> you just don't know how to stand still. 
you just don't know how to be at ease. You just don't know to let God be on the scene, not you being on the scene. You know, there are certain things where God will just stop me and say, God, don't do nothing. Amen? Don't do nothing. Don't say anything. Don't respond. I'm going to do it on your behalf. You know, it feels so good when God responds on your behalf. And guess what tonight? God is about to answer on your behalf. I said God is about to answer on your behalf. God is about to vindicate you in the name of Jesus. God is about to fight for you in the name of Jesus. Oh my God. Don't be too quick with God. You want to run quicker than God? You want to go ahead of God? You know, there are times and moments where I would be faster than what God wants me to do. I was telling him, I was it two or three days ago when I was trying to do things faster on that particular day. I wanted to do this, I wanted to do that, I wanted to do that. And all of a sudden, I ended up not doing what I, what I planned to do. And when I sat back, the Holy Spirit ministered to me. He says, don't go quicker or faster than me. So I had to stop you doing certain things because I didn't want you to go ahead of me. So some of us, we want to go ahead of God. Uh-huh. Amen. 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 We want promotion before God promotes us. You want to use shortcuts to your promotion. You want to bribe people in order for you to get what God has already said for you. I told you, I said, every time you are about to get your destination, it's every time the enemy strikes. Every time the miracle is at simply at the, hey, you know, maybe one step away from where you are. It's every time the enemy comes and strives. Hey. Does it mean God hates you? Does it mean God just allows those things to frustrate you? Shake your neighbor and tell them that they are there just to build my character. Oh, shake another neighbor. Tell them they are there just to build my character. Listen, you are a strong human being that God is about to release to nations. You are simply a project in the hands of the Messiah. You are simply a project that God is about to release to many nations. Listen, God will not just release you if you are not ready for functioning. So when you make, you know, before you make the actual house or the actual property, there's what they call a prototype. You come up with something that looks like the original when it's not the original. Listen. you are is just a reflection of what is about to happen to you. The pain you are bearing today is the listen the pain that you are going through today listen the crisis that you are dealing with today it is simply the opposite of what is about to happen to you. Listen. Somebody who is attaining a master's degree, they sit for exams according to their level. You cannot allow them to sit for grade one exams in order for them to achieve a master's degree. 
So many people want greatness, but they don't want to. To meet the challenge that takes people to greatness. So the challenge ahead of you, it is simply taking you to your promised land. Even the children of Israel, along their way to their place of milk and honey, they had to meet the Red Sea. Hey, hey, hey. Jesus had to meet the cross and the grave. Right? Right? David, before he killed Goliath, he had to kill the bear and the lion. So your current challenges, your current crisis, it is simply there to graduate you, to qualify you, to take you to another level. Am I talking to somebody? Say amen. God does not call you to be on one level. God does not just call you to be where you are. There is a place which God has prepared for you. If I were you, I was going to say amen. If I were you, I was going to say amen. amen. Listen. There is a position or there is a place where you begin to observe the dealings of God. You don't get involved, but God gets involved. Because there are certain things when you involve yourself, you end up crushing before you get to your destination. So don't fix, don't fix things on behalf of God. You hear me? Don't fix that. You know, the people who, who want to be quicker than God. So guess what? Quick fixings, they bring great damages. What do I mean? When you do things without perfection, it will surely take you back to redo it. So don't jump certain things. Don't jump certain stages of life. When God has allowed you not to eat, not to have a meal, let it be so. When God has allowed you not to afford to pay for your career or for whatsoever, let it be so. But one thing I know, he's a God who never leaves you nor forsake you. He's a God who is always on time and never late. He's a God who is always there with you. Can I talk to somebody here? Can I talk to a believer who says amen? amen. Can I talk to somebody who says amen? amen? Can I talk to somebody who says amen? amen. Listen. Jehovah my shoka. Listen to me. God is about to do something extraordinary in your life. You are not an ordinary person. That is why even the challenges that you're going through are not ordinary challenges. Ordinary challenges are for ordinary people. Extraordinary challenges, they are extraordinary people. Shake your neighbor, tell them, be still and know that he is God. Uh uh, tell another neighbor, tell them, say, be still and know that he is God. Uh oh. Be still and know that he is God. Listen, he will never be late, he will never be too early, he will always be on time. Things may seem as though they are not happening. But they are happening from the inside. I said they are happening from the inside. I said they are happening from the inside. I said they are happening from the inside. Hmm. Tell your neighbor, say neighbor. Say neighbor. God is bigger than what you are going through. And tell them that he is the only one who can handle it for you. 
and ask them, can't you hand it over to God? Oh, ask somebody, say, can't you hand it over to God? Listen, certain situations, when you handle them on your own, they'll crush you down. I've seen people who die because of depression. I've seen people, people dying with stress. Amen? So, why do they die? Depression and stress is simply because they handled it on their own ability. They did not hand it over to God. Hey. Hey. I said, hey. I said, hey. Listen. God is not a man that he should lie. Nor a son of man that he needs repentance. Amen. I said amen. I said amen. I said amen. I said amen. Tonight, we are here to know that he is God. I said tonight, we are here to know that he is God. I said tonight, he's about to show off in your situation. Our God is about to show off in your life. He's about to show off in your circumstance. In the mighty name of Jesus. Listen. Your business might have been dry. You might have been experiencing a season of drought. But guess what? Can I tell you what is about to happen? Can I tell you what is about to happen? I said, can I tell you what is about to happen? Can I announce to you what is about to happen? Listen. There is a certain level of abundance that God is about to release over your life. I said there's a certain level of abundance that God is about to release over your life. says the prophet sends his servant a house is it first kings the second kings chapter number 45 to go on a mountaintop to go and check after he had commanded the rain not to rain for three and a half years and it was a time now when he was about to command the rain back right now after three and a half years he commands his servants says go and check outside and check if there is any cloud. Because I can hear there is a sound of abundance. The servant went once. He came back. He says, I didn't see nothing. Second time. On the seventh time, he comes back running to the, to the master. He says, prophet, guess what I saw? I only saw a cloud as small as a man's hand. I didn't see anything big. But all I saw was a cloud as small as a what? A man's hand. And guess what? You might have nothing big to show today. You might be sure. But guess what God says? There is a sound of abundance. Now listen. What you perceive in the spirit. What you see about yourself in the spirit. Would determine what you achieve in the reality. So if you see yourself as a gardener. You remain a gardener for the lifetime. If you see yourself as a waiter, you see yourself as a waiter for the life. God cannot just employ you as a waiter if he has no plan. He says, I don't need the out of the pain into because of one idea. His God is the day you sleep with all your head down. It's the day when you walk, you put all your feet down. Knowing that your God is able. Hallelujah. 
hallelujah. I said 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 hallelujah. Listen. She was somebody great. Just know who your God is. Listen. It's no longer you who lives, but Christ who lives inside of you. In other words, don't handle your current crisis as an individual. Let it be and leave it for the Lord. I've been praying, I've been fasting, and nothing is happening. Guess what? Stop. Just watch it and see the salvation of the Lord. And guess what? Just begin to thank God about it. Give thanks that God, I thank you for my multi millions that are coming into my account. Listen, don't pester God with your problems anymore. Go before Him with a heart of gratitude, go before Him with a heart of thanksgiving. Hallelujah! I said, Hallelujah. Jesus thanked the Lord. He thanked his father. And guess what happened? As he was giving thanks, he just commanded once Lazarus, rise up. Immediately he arose. So there are certain situations we don't need to push God. We just need to realize who he is and begin to thank him for who he is. I was talking to somebody, you were going to say amen. amen. Have a heart of thanksgiving before the Lord as you know who he is. Be still and know that I am God. In other words, he's commanding you and I just to keep quiet. Just to take a step back as we are thanking him as we are giving praises to him, as we are worshiping him, guess what he's going to do? The walls of Jericho are going to begin to break down. Hey, 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 hey. Listen to me. The Bible says they round off the wall of Jericho seven times. On the seventh time, the walls began to fall. So, engage yourself in a season of praise and thanksgiving. Get to a point where you begin to thank God. Hallelujah. Give me one more minute. Hmm. Begin to thank Him. Begin to thank the Lord. Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. The Bible says Paul and Silas, they sank. And guess what happened? What happened? Huh? The chains and the gates of the prisons were opened up. So there are certain things you just need to release them in thanksgiving. Thank God for what you are going through. Thank God for that thing that has been eating you up. It's not just there to finish you. It's not there just to bring you down. It is there to build you up. The real meaning of life. May God help you. Right? We don't just come for communion because everybody else is doing it. We do it in remembrance of him who called us. We do it in remembrance of him who paid a price on the cross. We do it in remembrance of he who is able to lift us from nothing into something. From nowhere into somewhere. From
is into somebody. Blood of the Lamb. Of this thing called life. Until we meet this Jesus. Life can never be meaningful without Jesus. It is useless. Watch your to know and to operate in the abundance of the word of God. Because water represents the word of God or the Worship him. Just, just thank him just tonight. He's gonna show up in your life tonight. Yes, then I am the Thank you, Lord. Our God. Thank you. I want you to understand that this thing is very important in our lives. I don't want you to do it because your neighbor is doing it. Do it because the Holy Spirit has communicated to you to do it. Let this mark the beginning of greatness over your life. Let it be. be the beginning of greatness in your life. Let it be a mark. Let there be a mark of greatness from tonight. Let there be a mark of expansion from tonight. Let there be a mark of increase from tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter number 11, verse 22, the Bible says, verse 23, sorry. Hmm. The Bible says, for I received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you. That the Lord Jesus in the night in which he was betrayed he took the bread. And when he had given thanks he broke it and he said this is my body which is for you. This do in remembrance 
is do in remembrance of me. Those that are watching us on Facebook, if you can also join us on this communion service, just get yourself some, some grape juice, get yourself some bread. I want us to break this communion together and you cannot know what God can do out of that holy communion tonight. You know, it's one of the most important thing that every believer must do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. And we don't just remember Jesus once in a while. We can do communion even every day in our houses. We remember him every day because he reigns every day. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body which is for you. This do in remembrance of me. In like manner, also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Hallelujah. So this is the body, the blood, I mean the body that, the bread that symbolizes the body of Jesus Christ. Amen. And the Bible says he broke it and said, this is my body which is for you. This do in remembrance of me. So when we do this, we are doing it in remembrance of he who was broken, on he who was beaten up, on who, who whose blood was coming out, gushing out for the sake of you and me to live a proper life, to live a stable life, to live a promoted life, to live a kind of a life that is beyond human circumstance and beyond human understanding. So the blood comes with a definition of another kind of life. And the Bible says in this manner, also the cup after supper saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as ye drink. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink the cup, ye proclaim the Lord's death till he cometh. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat the bread or drink the cup of the Lord in unworthy manner shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man prove himself and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he that eateth and drinketh, eateth and drinketh judgment unto himself if he descend not the body. So in other words, don't do it with a kind of mind. You must descend the presence of Jesus as you do it. Mm. <clears throat> hallelujah. I said hallelujah. I said hallelujah. I pray that the Holy Spirit will help us to descend. I pray that the Holy Spirit will help us to perceive something great. In the mighty name of Jesus. As you receive the body of Jesus Christ, may it bring a serious significance of the remembrance of the body of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus. Listen, I want you to lift up your hands in a second. The Bible says, whosoever, right, drinks or eats in unworthy manner, shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. So if you know you are guilty or unworthy, I want you to pray a simple prayer and accept Jesus to be our Lord and Savior and begin to proclaim the salvation of the Lord over your life. Proclaim the forgiveness of sins. Proclaim that you are a new creation. The old is gone and the new has come and your past is over. Declare it in a few seconds if you can. 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name. Say, Lord Jesus, thank you for your blood that speaks better things over my life. I come before you for I realize I am a sinner without you. But with you, I know I am the saved of the Lord. I am the redeemed of the Lord. In the name of Jesus, tonight, O oh Lord, forgive me. Wash me in the precious blood, in your precious blood. Say, Father, Father, I come to you as I believe in my heart. And I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord. That Jesus is Lord. Say, Father, save me, O Lord. Write my name in the book of love. I am born again. I am a child of God. I carry the DNA of God. From tonight, I carry the abilities of God. In the name of Jesus. If you believe, I shout amen, 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 and clap hands for Jesus. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Now listen. I told you I don't want you to do this in a religious way. I want you to do it knowing who you are in Christ Jesus. In knowing who your Jesus is. Amen. As we stand still and know who he is. You know, guess what? Tonight God is going to do phenomenal things through this. Amen. 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 Some of you, you've had drought and dryness in your businesses after tonight. This communion is coming to resurrect things in your life. It is coming to resurrect your financial life. It is coming to resurrect that dead relationship. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Pastors, just help me to pass the bread and to pass the, the blood of Jesus to everybody. Just do it quickly. If you can, just do it quickly. I want us to do that in less than five minutes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, oh my Father, for giving us your son.
I want to believe that everybody has, right? Do we all have the choir has? Somebody didn't give the choir. Somebody didn't give the choir. If you can help me, I want us to do this once and for all. And those that are watching us, just be connected, stay connected, and see what God is going to do in your life. I want you to believe God for a new thing. I want you to believe God for something different. In the name of Jesus. Is everybody holding their bread? Is everybody holding their bread and their everybody Abba. thank you Jesus listen Shh. you're still in need of this God listen up your bread and thank Jesus the Bible says and he lifted it up he broke it and he gave thanks unto the Lord and he shared it among them I want you to eat that bread right away thank you Jesus I can sense the mighty move of God tonight. I don't want you to look at your neighbor. Don't look at anybody. Focus on Jesus. It's not about your neighbor. It's, about no, it's not about evangelist hope. It's not about somebody who is looking at you. It's about the Jesus who is capable of doing something new in your life. So only those that are saying, God, I am tired with my circumstance. Let this blood of Jesus, may it mark a new beginning in my life. May it mark something great over my life. Give thanks unto the Lord and drink the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Close your eyes. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody's about to be touched. Somebody's about to be delivered. Somebody's about to experience a new beginning. Thank you, Jesus. Just focus on Jesus if you can. Close those eyes, lift up those hands. Thank you, Jesus. That's the power of the Holy Spirit. That's the power of the Holy Ghost. He's moving in this place in a mighty way. Don't look at somebody who is falling. Focus on your God. It's not about your neighbor. It's about you. That's the power of the Holy Spirit. Listen. People are falling. Nobody is touching them. But the power of the Holy Communion. You know, it's so intense in this place. The power of the communion. Oh, Sakato Shalamando Robosaya. 
Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. He's about to touch somebody who is ready to be touched by him tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Your life is taking a dramatic change tonight. Enough is enough. Enough of that nonsense in your life. Oh, kasakato shalamanderebosaya. Holy Spirit move in this place. Oh, Kasakadosha. E Kataramanda Ravosa. E Katoramanda Ravosa. E Katoramando Ravosa. E Katesha Kata. E Katakatoya Manderevosika Yamando. Jesus. can sense the mighty move of God in this place. Lift up your hands once again. Just be still in his presence. Allow him to touch you. Allow him to change things in your life. Allow him to do something new in your life. sense his mighty presence tonight. I can sense people being promoted, being lifted up. I can sense people's spiritual lives being lifted to another dimension. There is a greater dimension coming upon your life. I can sense increase in your financial life. I can sense increase in your marital life. I can sense increase in everything that concerns you. In your career, in everything that concerns you. Lift up those hands once more time. Father, we thank you. Lift up your hands. Close those eyes. God is going to move in this place. The angels of the almighty God are going to touch some people in this place tonight.
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. God has just deposited something great inside of you. You are about to bathe out something great out of you. Oh, Sakato, Shakato. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I love you, Jesus. Pass the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. So thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for touching me tonight. And thank you for visiting me tonight. My life will never be the same. I pray for our viewers wherever you are. As you have taken that Holy Communion, may your life never be the same again. May your life never be the same again. I decree, let it mark the beginning of new beginnings. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. And I decree and I declare, that marks the beginning of your celebration. Amen. That marks the beginning of your celebration. Amen. That marks the beginning of your celebration. Amen. Listen. Those who are prophetic, they've already gotten it, they've already connected, they've already done everything, and they know that the deal it is done, it is sealed. And they know that their God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above the which we can think or imagine. Hallelujah. Amen. Now listen. Those that are prophetic, they know that it is a done deal. Amen. They know it is a what? A done deal. Huh? Hit a high five to somebody. Tell them that it is a done deal. It is a done deal. Say there is a blood that is involved now. There is a blood that is involved. Tell them, say the blood is involved. The blood is involved. It is more than a covenant. Yes. It is more than an agreement. Yes. It is a done deal. Deal. Hey. Spirit of loneliness is just leaving you. Okay. No more loneliness. For the Lord is about to do a new thing in your life. The Lord is about to do a new thing in your life. You never be lonely anymore. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Father, I thank you for the new beginning in our life. I bless you, Lord. Amen. Just stand over there. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We need to pray for the security of your job. Amen. Okay? Amen. Let the blood of Jesus speak protection on your job. Amen. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Because I saw something that is being cooked against you. Amen. But let the God that I save. Amen. Thank you. Let Jesus. the God I of Prophet Didi Jesus. Isaac. I receive. Let the God of the Prophet of this house. I receive. May He visit you tonight I in the name receive. of Jesus. I receive. Thank you, Jesus. Hmm. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lift Jesus. up your hands. 
Father, I thank you. Thank you for touching her tonight. Let the hand of God touch you tonight. May it bring divine increase. In the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord. Lift up those hands and say, thank you, Jesus. Lift up those hands and say, thank you, Jesus. I said, lift up those hands and say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. Listen. What God has done, no man can do. Amen. All those that are tithers, you are faithful.